Good evening and thank you everybody for uh, making the time to come in tonight. Uh, my name is Salesh Mehra. I am with the planning department and this is one of many community meetings for your new general plan. As some of you know, the general plan is the city's manual for, for growth or development or just controlling the built environment over the next 10, 15, 20 years. The last general plan was drafted in 1999, and the shelf life for a, for a general plan is about 20 years, so we are um, right in the middle of um, that, that previous plan uh, kind of running out uh, its shelf life, and uh, that's why we're here tonight to start the visioning process. So this is a crucial step to get your input in shaping the next general plan. What do you like about the city? What do you think needs to change? Uh, do you think there need to be more parks, more schools, more um, housing along transit, less housing, uh, whatever the case may be, this is where we need your feedback. So uh, we appreciate a lot of your neighbors turning out. We, the city has hired a team of consultants to help us gather the information which tonight is. It's a uh, fact finding and information gathering meeting and um, we look forward to getting your input. So I'm going to stop talking, uh, hand it off to our consultant and uh, we'll start getting your input uh, very quickly. Eric. Thanks, Leish. Um Thank you all for coming tonight. My name is Eric Yurkovich. I'm an associate principal at Ramey & Associates. Um, we're part of the consultant team who's helping guide the process for the update of the general plan. Um, I'm really excited to be here tonight. We went through a series of meetings over the August and September period, and a lot of what you're gonna do tonight is gonna hear a, a lot of the conversation that happened during those meetings and start to think about what the vision for the city is like. So in those meetings, we asked things like, what you love about your neighborhood in South, South San Francisco? What are the kind of big issues that you have in your neighborhood and in the city? And what your vision is for the future tonight, if, if for the future. So tonight, we're going to report back a lot of what we heard so you can confirm that we heard the right stuff. And if we didn't, we're gonna, you're going to have an opportunity to tell us that. But we're also going to talk about some draft visioning themes and guiding principles that we were that were derived from that community engagement and start start to talk about where you'd like to see land use change, new amenities, new transportation improvements within the city. And before I begin, I just want to again thank you all for coming. I know it's uh, Wednesday night; it's a little bit hard in the holiday seasons to come out. A lot of us are just back from vacation, so thanks for that. Um, my job here is to really kind of give you a roadmap of what we're going to do. I'm going to talk at you for about another minute, but then at that point, uh, I want you to talk to your neighbors. We're going to ask you to share some of your big ideas for South San Francisco with your neighbors so you can learn a little bit more about them um, and have us hear a little bit more from you. Um, after that, I'll give a short presentation about what the general plan process is, kind of what we've done to date, the community feedback that we heard during that first round of community workshops. And then I'll kind of walk through, there's, as you all saw on the way in, there's five activity stations out there, and you're gonna spend most of your time out there tonight, but I'll walk through what those exercises are, and then I'll release you all to go out there tonight. Um, so what we wanna do here for a second is think about what our big ideas are for South City. So general plans, as you all know, are kind of long processes. They run over two, two and a half years long. And it's really an opportunity for us as a consulting team to meet you, for you to better know city staff, and for you to better meet your neighbors across the city. So what we'd like you to do is kind of consider this question for tonight. So what are your big ideas for South San Francisco? Assume that there, you don't have to worry about political pressures or financial obligations or even what your neighbors think. We want you to think about and share your big ideas for what, South, for what you want to see in South San Francisco over the next 20 years. So just take a moment to reflect and then I'd like you to turn to your neighbor or two and kind of share your ideas. And then I'm gonna call on a couple of you to tell us what some of your big ideas are. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'd like uh, just one, one or two or three of you to share uh, what your big idea is and if you can kind of keep it pretty brief. Anyone? Yes. Um, so number one was uh, having a better Caltrain station. Uh, the status of Caltrain right now is not really yeah. um, Partner with uh, the biotech companies that are in South and South and around to make South San Francisco the most green city in the U.S. at least. Um, we need a pharmacy in downtown area. We need a mod the city needs to become more modern in every aspect. I mean, there's no gym, like a modern gym as an example in the city. A lot of modern facilities don't really exist um, and have more green around in the city. Great. Thank you. I saw another hand over here. Yeah. Uh, we talked about a couple different things. I mean, there's being um, protected bike lanes at all the major streets in the city. You can get around on bikes and on foot more easily and more safely. And then also schools um, being able to open their playgrounds and letting communities have better access to the playgrounds. Great. And I got another hand in the back. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I think everything's great in South City. I've been here 30 years. I love South City. Everything's great. Parks, recreation, a lot of construction going on, doing stuff on El Camino. I can't have a hotel right here in my backyard. Uh, that's why I'm here. I think that everybody that's affiliated with the city of South San Francisco the last 30 years have done a great job. Uh, I think one day we stopped being a small community, and that was about a year or two ago. And now we're just doing whatever is going to make us money. I can live anywhere, anywhere I want. I can live in Burlingame, I can live in Palos, I can move anywhere I want. I choose to live right here in Burry Burry. And I've raised my kids there, and now my grandkids are here. And all of a sudden in the last year or two, this place has <coughs> gone from a community where you knew everybody, and everybody knew you, and everybody knew your business, which was fine. And <laughs> you knew all the people in planning, in the city department, everywhere. And all of a sudden now, it's just, let's just get bigger and let's just get this and that. And so my problem isn't so much with what's going on, is why is it going on? Why, why, why do we have to have 800 units right here and another 1,200 over here and another 1,600 over there? Now, I, I, that's not, what you're doing on Camino is, is your business. But we put a hotel inside a backyard. I mean, this is literally inside a backyard. Okay, and that's why I'm here. Yeah. And I just don't think that there, there's not one person in our neighborhood that wants a six-story hotel. And so I'm here for that. And like I said, I've been here 30 years. My neighbor here also has been here over 30 years. Awesome. And we can go anywhere. But we choose to stay here because it's a small community. So something's happening where they're taking our community away. So in a lot of communities, I think it's not uncommon for people to try and understand how the change around them affects them and what it means for their community. And what our job to do, our job here, and I think we're a room full of really, really smart people, is to kind of bridge that gap, is how we can understand what those issues are and kind of maintain the character and community that you still want to have. You've been here for 30 years, like you love this place, right? So how do we, how do we deal with these two? There's not, they're not opposed issues. So how do we bridge the gap and think about them together? And I think that's a, a challenge for all communities and not, not just this one, a lot of places where you work. So I do appreciate your honesty and talking about it. So, um, Trying to bridge a gap. It's more the oh. fact that this stuff belongs over there and not over here. Great, thanks. And then I'm going to call in Wendy, and then I'm going to we'll have an opportunity to share our ideas out out in the. Yes, Wendy, you have it. You. Okay. Uh, so um, my, what, my you, uh, your big idea. The first one that uh, came to my mind was uh, to make it more walker friendly. Right. I I live over in what has been re uh, designated as as the downtown over here by Chestnut. And I have, you know, like I've walked 
you know, I can walk a fair, a fair amount around, but it's, uh, it's really lousy when it's a sunny day because there's hardly any shade trees. Uh -huh. So, and then there are no benches. So if, you, if you're, you know, an older person like me, you need to have uh, shade trees and, and paths and sidewalks. <laughs> there are so many places around South City that still do not have sidewalks. Yeah. So it's amazing. But, uh, but I also wanted to uh, think about um, opening a uh, tourist office, Office of Tourism, because there are some gems in South San Francisco that are, I believe, unprotected. I don't think we have any protection status for any of our heritage buildings. So um, I'd like to see that part. Great. Thank, thanks, Woody. And we're going to have an opportunity to share more of our big ideas out there. There's going to be a whole station devoted that, to that out in the, for, in the atrium. Um, so uh, most of you already know what Shape SSF is, um, but if you don't, it's a multi-year process to update the city's general plan, uh, zoning code, climate action plan, and environmental impact report in collaboration with you all, the community. Um, for those who are less familiar with uh, a general plan, um, these are kind of long-range planning documents for the future. Like we're looking, as Salesh said earlier, kind of 20 years into the future. All communities in California are required by the state to maintain and regularly update their general plan. And really what they want you to do is to, to incorporate new issues and opportunities that are arising in your community, to start thinking about emerging trends that might be happening over the next 20 years. So like in 1999 when we did the plan, we didn't really have cell phones or most of us didn't have cell phones. Um, and then to really think about what the new state regulations are and how those are affecting the community so we can best kind of harness those and capitalize on those. The general plan, uh, Salesh says, does help guide decision making around new development in the city, but it also lays out policies for parks and social equity and climate change and many other topics in the community. So those are all part of the general plan process. Um, and so in this kind of in the development of the document, we'll be kind of working with you to kind of create that shared vision to really understand what the what is unique and special about the city that you want to maintain and keep. Um, and then think about how we address kind of those new challenges and new issues and opportunities that are happening in the community. Um, the general plan doesn't rest on its own. It's part of a whole lot of planning that's been ongoing and done in the past. Um, these are just a few examples of some of that work that's uh, either ongoing or being done right or have been done in the past. Um, our job is really to kind of filter up the ideas and themes from these documents into the general plan itself. So we're not just getting rid of all this work. Our job is really to honor the work that you all have done as residents, that staff has done as staff, and then the decision makers here have done to kind of filter that all up um, into the general plan itself. And again, this is just a sampling of the ton of different work that's been done in the city. Um, this diagram shows the overall planning timeline for the process. So those big bubbles are kind of the key points and deliverables um, in the process. And along the kind of the middle grid, you see these stars. So those are points of community engagement. And so what we try and do is we'll do some work on our side. We'll come back to you and check in and talk to you. Come back and forth. We'll go kind of iterative process. So. We came and we talked to you um, in August and September about some of those uh, key questions we were asking earlier about what's unique and special and what your challenges are. You're going to report that back today, kind of go in and inflect into thinking about what the vision and guiding principles are. Over the next uh, few months, we'll start to think about where land use change might occur in the city, what um, some of those improvements are in terms of transportation and parks and all that, all those kinds of things too. And then we'll come back to you and talk to you about that. Overall, the goal is to have a general plan in, uh, in winter of 2021. So there'll be a public draft of it um, for you to review. But all along the way, we'll kind of have these check-in points with you. Um, the next really big uh, public meeting for the general plan is going to be um, a community advisory committee forum on housing issues in the city. Um, we, this is the second of four sort of educational forums that we're doing as part of this process. So these are uh, intended to kind of bring you together with kind of regional and local thinkers on issues of housing, housing affordability, housing innovation, and all the state laws that are changing um, around housing 
in the state. This isn't necessarily um, a, a kind of a community feedback session, but it's really like a conversation so we can all learn more about um, all these issues. And that'll be on January 14th um, here at MSB. Um, and then also, I just want to let you know there's a web project website at shapessf.net. Um, you can go there. All of the summaries from all the past community meetings are up there. There's links to future events. There's also links to the existing conditions reports that have been done for the process. Um, and then also, I want to just point out that for those who are not here tonight, um, all of the feedback that you're going to be giving out in the atrium is all up online, and people can go and do a survey online and kind of give us the feedback through that online. So if your friends or colleagues are interested and are unable to attend tonight, the survey is up there and on the front page, and they can do that. So please let your friends, colleagues, and neighbors know. Um, so as I mentioned, over the last um, several months, we've been doing an, a lot of community engagement. We did a series of stakeholder meetings with community-based organization, faith-based groups, and business groups um, in the summer. Uh, in the fall, we shifted into sub-area meetings that we held all around the city. So we did nine of those. And how many of you, you're, there's a lot of familiar faces here. So how many of you attended one of the sub-area meetings? That's kind of what I thought. So quite a lot of you did. Um, we also, in addition to the sub-area meetings that we did around the community, we did uh, a series of pop-up meetings at the Mayor Town Hall, Concert in the Park, um, and some other organizations. Um, much of this initial uh, feedback was really focused on really understanding what the things that are unique and special about the city that we want to preserve as part of the general plan process, what some of those key issues are that we need to address as part of the general plan process, and then to really understand what you think are some of the visioning elements uh, that we want to talk about in the general plan. Um, these are just a few of the pictures from those. I won't spend too much time on them, but these are from each of those sub-area meetings around the city. Um, Again, we asked four questions, at uh, the same questions at every meeting, and I'm going to kind of go through what we heard from you all. So the first question we asked was, why did you move to your neighborhood, or why do you still live in your neighborhood? Um, this, uh, the thing on the right is called a word cloud, if you're not familiar. So if the word is bigger, then that means we heard it more frequently across the meetings and across the different groups. So. Um, you can see affordable, family, community housing, proximity. Those are all uh, concepts or words that were repeated over and over at the sub area meetings across, uh, across the city. And the bigger they are, the more times we heard them. We also gathered a series of stories. And I think those help to contextualize some of the words in the word clause. They really tell why people uh, moved to the neighborhood or what, what they wanted to see in their uh, change. So this is. A question, the second question we asked is what you love about South San Francisco and your neighborhood. Again, you have the word cloud, and here, like the biggest thing, as the gentleman back there said, is community. That's the thing that we heard over and over and over again across all of these sub area meetings. And if you read the second uh, story below, you can really start to visualize what that means. For that person, it was about the Memorial Day event um, and really bringing the community together. We also asked about the things you liked least about the city and what you'd like to change. Um, so we heard a lot about parking, traffic, the affordability of housing, the quality of uh, parks and infrastructure, and maintenance of all the infrastructure in the city. So those are the kinds of things we were uh, hearing um, in those sub-area meetings. Um, and then we also asked about what your vision for the future was to kind of get a sense of what people were thinking they wanted to see in the future. So affordable housing was one of the biggest ones, better schools, better parks, um, all those kinds of things kind of filtered up over and over throughout those community meetings throughout the city. So you might have said it in your sub area meeting in Westboro, for example, but a lot of people also said those same things in, in different parts of the city as well. So what we've tried to do is take all of that feedback from those community uh, sub-area meetings and all the pop-up meetings and kind of summarize them uh, for you. So if you go to the SHAPE SSF website, you'll find a summary of all of the meetings together, but then each individual meeting themselves. Um, and we have those available out there. And then you're going to actually go out there and read what you said and what your, uh, what your neighbors and friends said. And then you can confirm, modify, prioritize what we heard in those first meetings. So we really want to reflect back what we heard from you all during those meetings. Now, 
I think I'm almost done talking and we're gonna get you guys out there working. Um, as I said, we have five activity stations around the atrium that we'd like you all to do. Um, each of the stations will have a facilitator. A facilitator will have a badge like this that'll help kind of guide the discussion at each of the stations and show you how, how it all works. Um, when you complete each of the stations, which I'll go through in just a moment, we want you to take your agenda and get a sticker on your agenda for what that activity was. And if you get all five of the stickers and you do all five of the activities, you can come back to the sign-in desk and you'll get a ticket for a raffle. And we have some gift certificates to Seize Candy and then also Cafe Antigua for you all for the, for two, the two winners. So we'll do that raffle around 8.15 or 8.30, depending on how we're doing on time. Okay. And then uh, one last thing on that, we will also have um, Spanish stations here. So if you would like to do the exercises in Spanish, uh, they'll be available here. Do you want to announce it, Patricia? I probably should have prompted you beforehand. <laughs> Buenas noches para las personas que hablen español. Vamos a tener todas las actividades en esta esquina. Vamos a estar acá ayudándoles para que nos den toda la información y todas sus opiniones acerca de las actividades. Gracias. All right, thanks. All right. Um, okay, so each of the five stations, I'm going to walk through them really quickly. Um, the first station summarizes what you told us was unique and special about South City during all of these community events that we've had so far. We want you to do is review the list on the left-hand side. Those are the things that came up the most frequently in those meetings, and then the word cloud has a few more words. Um, if you see something that is missing from that list, take a post-it note, pop it up on the board. The second, um, the second activity station is on visioning themes and guiding principles. Um, these are really drawn from all that community input from the last session. The, community, the, the vision and guiding principles really sit at the high level of the general plan, and they're kind of cross-cutting themes. So they'll be kind of overarching over all of the different chapters of the general plan that talk about land use and transportation and parks and open space, conservation, and all those other topics which will be part of the general plan update. These really kind of sit above it and are kind of cross-cutting themes across all of it. So what we'd like you to do with these is to take, um, you'll have an opportunity to place your stickers. Um, you have six opportunities to prioritize what you think are the most important. And then we'll have a golden sticker for you to put that one, for the one that you think is the most important on all of the boards. So we want you to prioritize and then what's the most important there. And if there's a concept that's missing, there probably are many, you can take it, you can write it on a post-it note and pop it up on the board as well. Um, the next station is really um, kind of confirming and discussing those key community issues that were identified during the sub area meetings and the pop-up meetings. Uh, again, it's a, a list on the left-hand side of what came up most frequently in the word cloud. So we'd like you to review that. If you see anything that's missing on, the, on those lists, again, you can write on a post-it note and pop it up on the board. Um, the next exercise is a map-based exercise. So, General plans look at not just land use change, but also community amenities and other physical improvements that might happen over the next 20 years within the city. So what we have is a selection of different kinds of stickers, and we'd like you to think about where you would like to see those new land uses or improvements or community amenities across the city. So you get to paste those stickers on the map. Um, if there are things that are not reflected in the stickers, which I'm sure there are, you can either write them on, there's an other, you can write them on that, or again, you can write it on a post-it note and slap it up on the, on the map. And finally, we talked a little bit about our big ideas and shared some of them internally, but we have a station for you to kind of fill out what your big idea is. Uh, write it down, you can draw it out, some that, sometimes that's cool, and then we want you to take a picture with it um, over in the far corner in the station. So before I release you all to go out into the activity stations and go through all of the exercises, again, I really wanna thank you. It's really important for us that you all come out and attend these meetings. There'll be other opportunities to come and we encourage you to come to those events, encourage you to bring your neighbors and your colleagues and your friends to those. And then for folks who aren't here, let them know that there's an opportunity for them to go online and to do all of the activities that are out here, they'll have an opportunity to do online um, 
from the website. So again, thank you again for coming tonight and we'll see you out in the atrium. Yeah.